Hi. Yes, I'm wearing my sweater, sweatshirt, hoodie. Uh, and it's the 16th of June. Anyway, it's about 70 degrees here in New Hampshire. Uh, we went from like 85 to like 55 <laughs> over the last couple of days, so it's been fun. But it's all illusion. But I don't want to be cold, so I'm wearing my thing. Anyway. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the crucifixion. And, um, I don't mean that one. I mean yours. Uh, come on. We all have one. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We've all experienced as part of our curriculum something really difficult over an arduous period of time or not but something that we would consider to be akin to our crucifixion. Jesus mentioned this several times in the course and uh, alright I'll tell you a little bit of two of mine. I've got two pretty big ones. Um, I'm talking about the, the crucifixions here. Um, first one was Scientology. I was in Scientology from August of, I think, 1985. Never quite clear on that, but I'm pretty sure it was 85. Um, until spring of 2010 and about a dozen years of that time period I was in it 24-7 as a Sea Org member. Sea as in ocean, as in maritime. And this was in Clearwater, Florida and in Los Angeles, California. And uh, see I don't want to go into telling my story too much and I am finally at a, at a place of, of forgiveness um, in regards to it. Actually, let, let me tell you this. Uh, I have been out of Scientology now for about five years. And Scientology was still having control over my dreams. It still does. Even last night. Although, like in last night's dream, the infrastructure of the building that Scientology was in was just falling to pieces and I managed to get out. So that's a pretty good metaphor. But um, I had a breakthrough dream the other night um, and Scientology was hosting a psychic spiritual fair which they would never do. They looked down upon anything that's not Scientology, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, and they, they, they uh, consider the whole world to be people that aren't even trying, unless if they're doing Scientology. And in this, but in this dream anyway, they were holding a, a, a psychic spiritual fair of sorts. And John Travolta was there, and he found out that I was doing Course in Miracles. He comes, I want to talk to you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he sits down in front of me with those glaring eyes and says, somebody that goes from, a from Scientology to A Course in Miracles is the devil's mustard. <laughs> and I'm like, I look at him. I say, well, I like mustard. <laughs> anyway, I know it's silly, but it was really funny in the dream. And for me, it was huge because it was the first time that I told Scientology in a dream to bug off and leave me alone. I'm going to do what I want to do. And um, anyway, I could go into all of the... I mean, like... I'll give you a couple of examples. You wake up in the morning with everybody that's like 
hundreds of people that are staff members in Clearwater, Florida. And if one person doesn't wake up with everybody, then the next morning you got to wake up 15 minutes earlier. Everybody does. And uh, so on and so forth. And that can get pretty nasty after a while. And I had uh, a friend who was in one organization where they weren't bringing in enough dough. So he was on rice and beans with the whole organization for a year. A whole year. Then there was a staff meeting on Thursday night. Every Thursday night you'd show up and they'd have their e-meters. If you don't know what an e-meter is, it's like a lie detector, but they claim that it's more precise, and I guess it is. But um, every staff member would have to show up to the, to the meeting, pick up the cans, which are attached to the meter. Um, then the meter runs a very tiny electric current through you, and then it's amplified on the dial, and then based on the motion of the needle, the person applying the procedure to you knows if you have, uh, knows what to do with you, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Um, but if your needle was not free floating like this, if it was more like that or something like that, then you have to write up all your transgressions. And if you didn't have them done by the end of the weekend, you were the devil's mustard, man. So <laughs> anyway, I could spend a long, long, long time on this because I was there for a long, long, long time. but. They owned me, they own the people that are in the SEA organization. It's not just like Catholicism where they own you with guilt. They also own you with a meter that says that you're guilty and that can't be argued with. It is the authority. That meter is the authority. Um, and you have to write up your transgressions in a particular format until you have relief and then you plop them down in front and you pick up the cans and then if the needle is like that then you're off the hook until next time but that's a continuous stressful factor okay that was that was look I could get into a lot more severe stuff than that but that alone was was the constant stress and coercion and manipulation and so forth because when you're a Scientologist, you feel this is the only way that you can be spiritually free, and then they own you. They got you. So, I went through that for a long time, and that was one crucifixion. 